So the report paints a pretty bleak picture of the state of U.S. manufacturing. But, I mean, haven't we known that for a while? For 25 years, we've had the term Rust Belt. Uh, we, we've known that manufacturing is in trouble. Why, why is this report different? How is it shedding new light on this problem? Well, we actually never really knew uh, manufacturing in trouble. We knew it was in trouble in certain states and in certain regions. So uh, the region from uh, what eastern Pennsylvania all the way through maybe to southern Wisconsin, the Rust Belt, if you will. Yeah, that was in trouble uh, in the 80s and some of the 90s. And But other parts of the country were booming. And the North Carolina manufacturing industry was booming. So the overall manufacturing economy was pretty healthy. Uh, the problem now is that people still buy into this notion that it's quite healthy. Uh, I would argue where we are really today is, is not Rust Belt, but Rust Nation. Well, but we keep hearing that, uh, you know, we've come through a bad recession and manufacturing is coming back. More jobs all the time and, uh, you know, in fact we might even be on the, on the cusp of a renaissance of U.S. manufacturing. Is that not true? The Wizards could win the NBA championship, too. Uh, stranger things have happened. Look, the reality is the only reason it feels like maybe manufacturing's coming back is because the loss that we had in this recession was the worst loss we've ever had uh, prior to post-World War II. So yeah, of course we're going to get some back. On the rate of job manufacturing job growth we're getting back, it's going to take till 2023 to restore the manufacturing jobs we had in 2007. That's not a rebound. So, what is the main problem? I mean, if I mean manufacturing, we we, we are still making uh, a lot of products as a country. Uh, granted, uh, employment's gone down, but isn't that productivity? And isn't productivity what we want? This is the main, uh, you hit the nail right on the head, why the whole debate is, is as flawed as it is. It's not flawed because of the idea that we want productivity. The more productivity we have, the better. If we could have the manufacturing story be the agriculture story, that's great. It, it, it would be tough on the workers. Hopefully they would transition into new jobs. It would be great for the economy. It would be great for consumers. That's not the story. The agriculture story is a story of just relentless drive to improve productivity, fewer farmers, fewer farmers, fewer farmers, cheaper food. That's a great story. What the manufacturing story is about is actually a story of absolute loss of output. That's the story that doesn't get told in large part because analysts don't look at the data in, in a sort of segmented way and also because the top level data reported by the U.S. government is fundamentally faulty. So we aren't as productive or or productivity is just is is just measured wrong. Can you elaborate on that? I mean, how is it measured? Both wrong? are true. Uh, the way they the the actual way you should measure how well our manufacturing sector is doing is what's called change in real value added as a share of gross domestic product. In other words, are we producing our manufacturers adding value? So they take in some steel and out comes a car. Uh, are they producing the same amount of that? Uh, counting for the fact of inflation or deflation as a share of our economy, or is it going up or is it going down? The official numbers say that in the 2000s it went up, but not quite as fast as the overall economy. And that's the number almost everybody looks at. Robert Reich looks at that, Paul Krugman looks at that, All you, know, you name it. They all look at that number and they say, everything's fine. Well, there's two problems with it. One is, if you go down and start looking at the 19 different, what are called NAICS codes, the industries that make up all of manufacturing, for example, primary metals or transportation or medical, uh, ph pharmacy and chemicals, what you see is that 13 of the 19 industries are producing less today than they produced in 2000. And they accounted for 55% of manufacturing jobs. So there must be, there's a few industries that are producing a lot, right? Well, what happens is one of those industries, computers and electronics, NAICS 334, is so overly, overly inflated that it brings everybody up. According to the government, that industry is producing five times more computers and electronics today than they were in 2000, at a time when many computer companies have moved stuff offshore, at a time when jobs have gone down by half, at a time when the Census Bureau says we've, had, we've expanded the computer output by 22%. The Bureau of Economic Analysis says 470%. If you just took that out, it turns out 
that overall manufacturing output dropped. And when we calculate for these mistakes, we find that instead of going up about 15.5% over the 2000s period, which by the way is the smallest it's been since World War II, it actually went down 11%. So in other words, we are producing 11% less in manufactured goods today than we did a decade ago. So you've got one number that's mismeasured and it's completely skewing the top number for all of manufacturing. Yes, yeah. there are two yeah. other problems that we talk about in the report. Put those all together and that's what you get. You get, a, you get a, a problem where the government measurement system hasn't caught up to reality. Okay, so, but even if we are less productive than we've assumed, and, and, and even if we are, have lost uh, jobs, aren't we making up for it in services? This is, I think, one of the big problems. Uh, a lot of pundits will say, oh, we're moving to an evolved economy. Making things is, the, is that old economy stuff, and it's only the second-tier countries that make stuff. We're the ideas economy. A couple of big problems with that. Manufacturing is an ideas economy. It's not the Norma Ray textile factories that are dirty and all that. U.S. manufacturing is incredibly idea-based and technology-based. When you lose that, which we are, you lose the upstream part of the ideas economy. The second big problem is that services, while they're growing, while they're important, are simply way, way too small to afford, allow us to export enough services to, uh, to pay for all the cars, all of the chemicals, all of the things that we want to import as Americans. We can't pay for those with services exports. So we're really only left with two choices there. We can continue to run massive trade deficits, which means that my son and my daughter are going to pay a lot more in the future because that is a debt that we're going to owe. The Chinese are not giving us DVD players, they're loaning them to us. <laughs> they're giving them to us now, but they want money, they want real things later. Uh, so if we don't really respond to that, we don't, the, other, the other solution is to really restore manufacturing competitiveness in America, and that's a task we could do, but we have to understand that we have a real problem first. But having a lot of other countries uh, like the United States experience the same problem with manufacturing. A lot of production has shifted to Asia and other countries over the last few decades and it's a it's a period of transition and transformation but it's doable. It is clearly a period of transition and restructuring but you compare a country like Germany which by the way has 40 percent higher manufacturing wages than America, runs with trade surplus, its manufacturing share of its economy has uh, its manufacturing output has grown, hasn't declined. What happened to Germany was they, they did lose a lot of low-end, low-skill, commodity-based manufacturing. They don't make, maybe they make t-shirts in Germany, I doubt it. Maybe they make McDonald Happy Meal toys in Germany, I doubt it. That's where those things are made in China. But what Germany did is rather than decline, they restructured and they're now making even more advanced, complex products that only they have figured out how to make. And one of the reasons they've done that is they've got a great technology policy that helps German companies move into new technologies and new products. So many, many advanced countries have seen expanding manufacturing shares over the last decade. Austria, Sweden, Finland, uh, Germany. It's only a handful of the countries that are actually performing quite badly and coincidentally have lost manufacturing. Spain, Italy, the UK, United States, Canada. So losing manufacturing is not inevitable, nor is it healthy. But the United States, like Germany, like, like, these, other uh, like these other countries, um, we have policies in place to help our manufacturers, tax incentives and export promotion programs, and it's not as though we've completely abandoned this sector. So where did we go wrong? What are we not doing right that we're, that we're falling behind? We do have some programs and policies, but they are compared to our competitors, they're very anemic. If you look at a new recent, a recent study that came out from the National Bureau of Economic Research, it showed that our, the taxes that we impose on our manufacturers in America are the second highest in the world. Uh, we have very high taxes on U.S. manufacturing. Our, our statutory corporate tax rates the second highest in the world, soon to be the highest. Our research and development tax credit is very weak. It's about 23rd in the, in the world. Our investment incentives are weak. So we have a tax climate that frankly isn't competitive and, 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 and it's hard to overcome that. The other big problem we have is that we have a technology policy deficit. Uh, one of the really wonderful programs we have in the United States is something called the Manufacturing Extension Partnership Program. 
It's run by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. It's a partnership of about 60 or so centers around the country. They do great work. Japanese have a great program too. They fund their program 40 times more than we do. The Germans have a program 20 times more than we do. The Canadians 10 times more than we do. So we have these programs, but they're 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 almost afterthoughts. Uh, you know, if we if we really understand that there's a problem and that it is critical for the health of the U.S. economy, not just the health of the, the prosperity of a few manufacturing workers. That's important. This is about the prosperity of the entire economy. And if we don't respond to that with the right policies, both on the tax side, on the regulation side, but also on the technology side, uh, we're not going to be able to win. Isn't it too late? I mean, do we have time to, to implement and to make these changes? It is not too late. It'll be too late in about five to ten years. We're at a critical window, an inflection point in the United States economy for our 200 and 40 or 50 year history. From the very founding of the Republic, we've always said that manufacturing has to be a key part of American prosperity. If for no other reason than our defense industrial base, we haven't lost uh, the capability to rebound. We haven't lost the capability to become a world leader again in manufacturing, but we're close to it. And unless we take action now on what we call the four T's, tax, a much more effective trade policy to enforce intellectual property rights and other things that our manufacturers face in other countries like China and Brazil, a talent policy that really gets much more highly skilled workers in manufacturing, and a technology policy that funds industrial R&D, manufacturing extension. That's why I think the President's proposal of a billion dollar program, actually about $800 million program for manufacturing technology is so, so important, but so are other things like tax reform. So. But maybe the first thing we have to do is recognize the nature of the problem and that recognize that manufacturing is not as strong as we think it is. Uh, it's not simply that we're becoming more productive. Uh, we aren't necessarily uh, on, the, uh, on the edge of a, re of a, of a rebound, uh, but we've got a serious problem. Yeah, and, and, and just to be clear, we, we certainly are productive in manufacturing. Uh, of the 5.5 million jobs we've lost in the last decade in manufacturing, uh, certainly some of those jobs were lost due to higher productivity. And, and, and again, you want to help the workers transition, but that fundamentally is healthy. It's when we're losing jobs because we cannot compete globally, that's the problem. And over 3 million of those jobs were lost because of that. So we've got to recognize that's the problem. And the second thing we've got to do is we've got to understand that it's important, and not just important, but critical to regain competitive advantage. Uh, you have a lot of economists, for example, Christine Romer, Christina Romer at Berkeley, who was in was head of the Council of Economic Advisors, recently wrote an op-ed that essentially said manufacturing massage parlors, what's the difference? This is such dangerous thinking. You cannot run a globalized, you cannot be in a globalized economy that we're in today unless you have a healthy export sector, traded sector. Services isn't ready for that, and won't be ready for that for at least 30 years if then we've got to do it on high-tech and advanced manufacturing. If we can't do that, I would say the future of our economy is going to look a lot like the UK economy over the last 40 years, which is not very good. Sounds like a timely report and uh, a needed perspective. Thank you. Thanks.